Jari Bolander, welcome to the Story Engine podcast. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to be here. Now, it is such a pleasure to have you on. It's such a pleasure to catch up. We've worked together before, and I was saying before I wrote uh, for, for one of your blogs, um, one of my favorite articles ever called The... Uh, <clears throat> the seven deadly sins of content marketing. And you, you wrote a parallel kind of light side article. Do you remember what that one was titled? No, I don't. You're it was something the like spot. the seven commandments. No, well, it's oh. okay. You've, you've created a bunch. It's been a while since then. <laughs> it has. But anyway, has we've, we've just been uh, like diving into conversation and catching up already. Right. Um, and there's so much brilliance happening. And so I want to get you introduced so we can share all of that. Will you tell us about a story of a moment in your life that's defined who you are and how you show up in the world today? And then tell us a little bit about what you do in the world today. Yeah, well, uh, you know, before um, we got on the phone, I was listening to a couple of your old podcasts and um, I listened to the one about Kat's story and this exact question when she was talking about her dad and her dad passing away and how proud she, he would have been and how proud he was when he had, she had her first book. So my story is a little similar, except uh, I lost my wife, Jane, two and a half years ago to leukemia. And so what I do today has a lot to do with what she taught me and what I went through with her. And so, you know, we, she had a 15 month battle with leukemia that really taught me how to focus on what's important in life. And so nowadays I actually run her PR and marketing business called JSY PR and marketing where, you know, we're story driven and we feel that the organization that tells the best story wins. So that's why we're like, you know, fanboys of each other, I think. Absolutely. And so that experience uh, really made it for me that, you know, every day is precious and every day I'm here, not only do I have to try to do the best I can for myself, but for those that we've loved that have gone on. And part of that's also finding love again. So, you know, now I'm engaged to a wonderful woman named Minerva. And that came about through this seize the day, which I know is sound kind of a cliche, but really is a powerful message and how I try to run my business and run my life. And some days I, I do okay, some days I don't, but the goal is always was today a good day? And then I'm just happy to have it. So really powerful stuff from, from Kat. And, you know, Absolutely. Well, I want to acknowledge too. your your courage and your vulnerability because uh, when faced with, with tragedy of that magnitude, um, very, I think uh, people that are able to really transform that into a gift and, and make the world a better place for it are, are very much needed. Uh, you remind me of another uh, person I've worked with before, Dr. Greg Eckel, who um, lost his wife to a rare form of kind of a neurodegenerative disease. And since then, he's focused, he was a naturopath and has focused all of his uh, efforts on becoming, he's, he's now become the nation's leading naturopath and expert in neurodegenerative and is helping tons and tons wow. of people. And I see the work you're doing. And, and helping people communicate and reach more and that you've stepped in in the shoes of your of your late wife's um, <clears throat> PR firm and continue with her brilliance and continue to evolve it and continue to move forward in your life. So uh, yeah, thank amazing you. stuff. And I really appreciate you. Oh, yeah. No, I appreciate that. It's uh, something that we don't talk about as a society a lot, especially men. Uh, men tend to hold it inside. And if you hold it inside, it eats you away. Yeah. And then you get all this really poor behavior and a lot of sad, grieving, you know, men and women. Um, but letting it out and sharing it is how I heal. You know, I I'm, I'm writing about it and trying to really like be very conscious because when I was going through this and, and, and still to this day, it's a lonely journey. And so I want others to know that they're not alone because that was the worst part for me. I mean, other than losing Jane is the loneliness because you just feel like the world's against you. Yeah. Yeah. That's really powerful. And it is, it, it can, 
it can heal you or it cannot. And it's funny, just as I agree with you as, as men, there's no, there's very rarely points in our lives or mentors or anytime we see somebody who can adequately like understand and respond to and integrate their feelings. And so, <clears throat> yeah, it comes out in all kinds of ways. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, but I want to uh, pick up on another, our, our lives have been parallel in a lot of ways. And, and uh, when we were both working a lot in content marketing and now um, our, our story work has evolved in, in similar ways. And you were telling me something about a, <clears throat> I believe it was the story narrative or a PR PR narrative. narrative. Yeah. Can PR you narrative. tell me a little bit about this? Because PR is still something I'll be, I'll be honest with you. So I'm a marketer. I build sales funnels. I, yep. I know what SEO is yep. and, and I've had a lot of like PR people, but it still is something that I, I, I don't grasp as well as I think I should. Yeah. And I'm, I'm probably not doing as well as I could. Yeah, no, no. And that's, I get that question all the time, especially from tech CEOs and, and tech startups, because, you know, a lot of times communication, simplifying what you, what you do and how you communicate it gets overlooked, especially if you're in a technology company where it's all about tech, all about tech, all about tech. I'm sure you see this all the time, even in non-tech companies where people are like in love with their product. And so again, you know, listening to some of your old podcasts, it was the one with Holly that really like hit me. I almost like had to pull over because <laughs> I was listening to it in the car um, because your signature element method, the who, what, and why framework is very, very similar to the framework that I use with clients called my PR narrative. And the PR narrative is basically the tip of your communication sphere. It is the single story that you want to tell everyone that they'll remember. And you want it to be clear, concise, compelling, and you want to deliver it with such confidence that people will share your story. And so when I was looking through this, I'm like, man, this is just really an interesting like dynamic, like, wow, like, how did, how did he come up with this? And how did I come up with it? <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. I'm just, we're just geniuses, I guess. I, I don't know. Like we're must just, be. You know, brothers uh, from another mother kind of thing, but, <laughs> but, but, but how I thought about this and actually how Jane thought about it, um, was, was really kind of emphasized when I started to look at story grid, which is a methodology, a framework to edit. Um, and I'm, I'm a certified story grid editor. And I use this framework and, and kind of methodology to really craft better stories by having them follow a framework. And so when you had your who, what, and why, and I look at my stuff, mine's the why unique and the pain you solve. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, well, this is such an interesting kind of, how, how could we play around with these things? Because really, I think you even said in the episode, it's like, this is an experiment. It's going to change. How do we evolve our story, what we, how we talk about it so that we can get the maximum impact? And especially if you're pretty much doing anything, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you need to pitch a company to an investor or to a customer. And so the framework, which I, again, came up with, which is partly from what Jane taught me and, and, and partly from what the story grid taught me, was that the stories have structure. And if you know stories have structure, then you know that there has to be certain things in a story. And so universally, based on the story grid methodology, all stories have a beginning hook, a middle build, and an ending payout. So they have three parts, just like the three acts of a play, just like in a movie, you know, Star Wars, since that came out recently, they all have this same structure. And so if you know this, then you can start to really craft and refine your message or your narrative and not have to worry about, do I have all the pieces? And so the reason why I picked the why your company exists, why are you unique and what pain you solve is because when I was looking through all of these technology companies and all the ones that really resonate with me, they all had those components wrapped up in their story. And, and specifically, it's not, you know, a long story, it's a 10 second elevator pitch. And so when I saw your signature statement, and then I looked at my PR narrative, and I'm like, Oh, okay, well, we got to talk more about this. Because I think 
the truth is everything is somewhere in the mix of all of this. And yeah. You know what I, I mean? I do. And I think one of one one of the things that I would do to break this down is to imagine like what's the first conversation I have with a lot of these people and what are the things I need to know? And I think this both of these things achieve uh one of the things that I need to know that I that is often missing is it's it's always great to have a story framework. Um, I love working with templates myself, but if your client doesn't understand the audience they're speaking to, then yeah. the templates have no meaning. They don't, they don't fit and right. it, it becomes difficult for them. But the more they understand their, their clients um, onto like, it's kind of like, you know, the ones that are really good, especially the tech companies, the software as a service that mm -hmm. sticks around, they're the ones that kind of understand you on like, I think I've said this before, and I think I actually learned this from Holly or she's asked me questions like this, but on like a Seinfeld kind of level where you're yeah. sitting in a restaurant and something weird and dumb happens on that and you're like, how did that, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of, you know me on that level and right. can you reach me there? And that's, that's the level where it's like, wow, you know, they're, they're worth listening to or it, it creates that trust. Oh, totally, totally. And, and again, since, you know, we've been listening to stories and for our entire existence, I mean, every time we sat around a campfire trying to figure out how to not get eaten by a saber tooth tiger or where the good food was or where the water is. I mean, they, we had to tell stories. That's the only way that we learned and had the oral traditions of our ancestors came down. So it's in our DNA. We recognize it. We see it. We know what resonates with us. We know how it makes us feel. And so when you're a company, a brand, a product, if, if you can't get that in the core of someone, that they're not going to pay attention to you because there's so much noise out there. I mean, it's incredible how much stuff gets generated every day, just every day. So I, so, yeah, so that's, that's sort of what I think was really interesting when, when I, again, yeah. when we hadn't talked in a while and I'm like, oh. Ah, oh, you stole my idea. No, <laughs> idea. Well, well, let's break down your narrative because I'm, sure. I'm, I'm curious. So we've got three components here and yeah. maybe if uh, I'd love for you to explain them in a way or maybe how you coach people through it and maybe sure. some of the prompts you share. And if sure. people were listening in and maybe they have a pen and paper, they can, they can start working on this exercise right now. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So, so what I normally do is we, we start off with what we call the hook or why so why does your company exist seems like a simple question but in in some cases it can be really challenging because some people may not know the real reason why and the real reason why isn't the internal reason it's not the external reason so of course we want to make money and we want to be famous we want to be on you know kyle's podcast because he's super cool right mm -hmm. we want all these things mm -hmm. but internally like why did you start this because it's hard to build a product start a company provide a service and so what I usually say is like, take some time, five, 10 minutes, write one to two sentences maximum. Just try to get it down in a really concise way. Don't use any buzzword bingo. So no buzzwords, no techie words, just simple language. And then at the end, pick a single word that describes it. And it's really sometimes hard to pick that single word, but it's really important to have a single word because what you want to do is start to get your mind thinking of how you're going to craft this narrative. Because what happens is, is we put these three pieces together at the end and you will find that those three words that we'll come up with really are powerful. And a lot of times in story and in music and rhythm, you know, there's a power of three. So there's a rhythm to saying things three times. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, um, it can be a very good, rhythmic way and also a way to kind of bookend things because again stories right beginning middle end always has to have mm -hmm. a beginning has to have a middle has to have an end or it's not a story so if you're playing along at home write down why does your company exist in one to two sentences and then pick a single word in order to that exemplifies that and so that's the first step and then we talk a little bit about that and it's usually really good if you have a group of people especially if you have a tech company and you get a bunch of the founders together and we sit around a table and we just start brainstorming and then mm -hmm. people, people share, share it out. So, um, for you, I don't know if I'm going to put you on the spot, but, uh, could, could, could you it. say, I could do a little bit. yeah, 
So could you so, say why your company <clears throat> exists? So it's, it's evolved over, over time. I think, um, my why today, um, has, has really, has really shifted a lot for, for a long time. My why behind business was just like, I wanted to find a way to, you know, travel, travel the world and, and, uh, have a, a thriving business that would allow me to do it. But as I, as I grew in my skills and experience, uh, it's become much deeper. And uh, <clears throat> I've had some uh, personal health struggles over the last five or six years. And um, actually, when it came to working with uh, some really interesting functional medicine practitioners, uh, did I find kind of I started to focus in on exactly that niche of working with people um, in that zone. And and I've I've uh, it's it's a bigger why because when when i was kind of in a painful state of uh, an autoimmune condition that i didn't understand um it was so frustrating and confusing and i had several other friends suffering from that oh, yeah. and and i i just barely revealed to me how many people there are out there That's that can really make a big impact on these things but but for for whatever reason their message had never reached me or any people that were very very important to me and yeah. so i saw a big need for that yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, oh, so we've got to figure out one word though. No. Yeah, <laughs> I know this is the hard part, but, but you can see how that internal why is a very, it drives you beyond the fame, fortune, prestige money, because you know, what you really want to do is you want to help people that can help others, specifically ones that have this autoimmune problems. Yeah. Get so the message out so more people can, can be healthy or free, right? Yeah. Maybe I'll go with hope on that hope. one because okay, I think there cool. is, it's, it's really, uh, at least before, but you know, before I discovered a lot of this, even if I had like an injury, like carpal tunnel or like a kind of a sore knee or something for yeah. a long time, I was like, Oh, I'm stuck with this forever. I'm yeah. broken. And, yeah. and through working with a lot of people in this community, I've started to, to see what's really, really possible. And yeah. so uh, I had hoped that I could, I could heal and, and I continue to. And I think a lot of people uh, could use that right now. Yeah. I mean, that's, again, it's, it, it, it goes beyond just making money. It goes beyond um, a business, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, this, it's what drives you. And, and again, if, if you're playing along at home, what, how, however you started your business and wherever you are today, whatever it may be, Again, there's some unique story behind it. And that's the thing you got to tap into because people love nothing more than to say, well, hey, why did you start this? Like, what was, what was driven by you? I mean, for JSY, for PR, for what I do now, I mean, it started out, I had to do this because that's the only thing that was paying us. So when I was Jane's full-time caregiver, we needed money. And I was actually at a healthcare startup. You know, I was a founder of a healthcare startup. And she's like, well, they're not paying you and we need money. So you're running my business and I'm all, uh, so for me, it was survival. It was survival for us. It is now morphed as it does for you, as it did for you, morphed into more like, wow, the power of storytelling to help startups, nonprofits, and professional athletes get their message out to impact the most people with these inspiring stories that you never would hear about. That just, I have to share that gift with the world. Yeah. I just have to, because people need to know and people need to be just like you, people need to be healed and it could be different kinds of healing, but so that's really, and really spot on. So one thing I want to like, just share with maybe even the listeners right here, cause I get a lot of people who I, I do a lot of group coaching calls and there's some people who are just starting out their business. And this yeah. is like, it's so simple to, to say these things, but again, like we've been practicing this and it's evolved over five years and through the journey, the yeah. meaning comes forward. Yeah. And so a lot of people, when they're just starting out, they're like, well, I, I don't know, I, I have a skill and I'm a coach or, yeah. you know, I want to do something, but you don't have that, that quite, you know, powerful thing yeah. behind it yet. But if you just go on this journey and start to develop yourself and connect with customers and find who you can really impact, then that starts to, to grow with you as well. So I just, I want to share that as like good news for people out there who oh, yeah. maybe don't quite because we, we have to think about these things all the time as professionals, and it's still kind of hard to do on your own. 
Oh, oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, you know, I'm a little older than you and a little probably older than most of the listeners. So I've had more life experience. And if you're just starting out, you know, you got to go with where you're at and go on your journey. And sometimes your journey changes. I mean, I was a founder of a digital health startup. I'm a technical person, degree in electrical engineering. No way in hell I would have ever felt that I would be in PR and marketing at this point in my life. Like just wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my journey now is like way more fulfilling and, and, and instead of, you know, building products, you know, electronics and stuff, which, you know, I can still do. I'm now trying to enable people to, to share with the world their gift. And that's what you're trying to do. Like we all have this unique gift and you may think, oh, I don't know what it may be, but you'll find it. And then you need to share it because we all have something. It doesn't yeah. matter who we are. So that th start thinking about that when you go through this. And then, so then the second part, which, which is the middle build in the story mm -hmm. structure is what makes you unique. Again, if you're just starting out, you may not think you're unique, but there's something about you that's unique. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, you write t one to two sentences and then you pick a word. So Kyle, what makes right. you unique? This is easy. <laughs> this one's easy for me. This yeah, is right. cool. I was just writing about this on a on a solo podcast. And cool. um, but uh and and this is really I've my business has grown a lot this year, and it's because of getting into this this niche, I believe. Mm -hmm. I've been able to hone in my message and and who I work with and and how I can serve them. But uh why I'm different is there's very few marketers out there that understand this world with the depth that I do, mm -hmm. understand the customer's pain because I, I was there yeah. and, um, <clears throat> you know, have a, have a more personal interest in this. Like a lot of the people that I work with have things to teach me and I'm like excited. And so that's a very different experience than somebody who's maybe just kind of just doing another, you know, your, uh, another program or another startup or another community. Um, right. So being a specialist right in here and I'm able to, uh, <clears throat> it's dangerous because I'm starting to understand all of their language, um, which makes it, it kind of like can give me blind spots. Yep. But, uh, in, but in I, I know how to keep their, their language simple because that's like you were saying with startups is one of the most dangerous things. It's, so yeah, I would have to say experience. Experience. Okay, great. No, that's, that's really good. So we've got hope. The hope experience. The hope experience. <laughs> we got hope. We got experience, and we now know why you're unique because you know you're you're the target market almost like people oh, yeah. that you're marketing to. You understand them fully, and so for me and in, in what I do, right? So I'm a technology guy. You know, I'm an engineer by training, and I like to say an entrepreneur by nature. So what makes me unique is there's not a lot of PR and marketing people that have got the technical background especially early stage startup where it's just chaos. Like they have no idea how to explain what they do. So I can take complex technology and simplify it in a way that's not going to dumb it down, but also in a way that allows you that your grandmother can understand it. And that's a really powerful thing. So that's sort of my, you know, uniqueness for what I do. So, so now, and then my word would be, Oh, I didn't have a word for the why. Um, uh -oh. oh, okay. I got to think of one. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think my why is to inspire people mm -hmm. and, and I want to inspire people for the why my uniqueness is, uh, I would say, um, simplicity. Like I can simplify complex things. So nice. I like so you've got hope experience. I've got inspire and simple. And so you'll, as we go through, you'll, we'll, we'll make this up on the fly. So again, those of you playing at home, write all this down and you know, put it in the notes or send it to Kyle. He'll forward it to me and Ron. We'll, we'll do it. Uh, what we can do is if, yeah, if you uh, put a, put a comment in the show notes yeah. online, I'll check it out. And if we get a lot, then I'll, I'll loop yeah. you in and we 100%. can, we can be have great. some conversations. Yeah. Cause I think this, you'll find this really powerful if you're really trying to figure out what you're doing or if you want to refine your message. So mm -hmm. So then the last part is the ending payoff. This is the pain that you saw. So for you, same thing, one to two sentences, pick a word. So for your business, Kyle, what, what pain do you solve? They wake up and they just want marketing to not be a thing today. 
so that they can actually go and do the job that they've invested in trained in doing. Okay. Um, so there's, you know, constant frustration and stress and chaos and how do I, I like that some people can get traffic to their site and, you know, there's a lot of like, you know, do I do SEO? What do I even do? I hope that make that simple by just creating the one clear path to sales, which is kind of my own process. But so I make it simple and easy so that technology doesn't have to be a thing today. So um, <clears throat> it might have to be uh, simplicity. And yeah, then, simplicity or peace of mind or... Yeah. You know, because that's a, a really clarity good, is another clarity. Good one. Oh, I think uh, that might be good because you you know what you need to do. We've yeah. got one simple structure that will drive people to the program that's going to make you money. And mm -hmm. if you can get that thing set up, which people drag their feet to do, surprisingly, everybody like there's a hundred things we got to do. We got to go register the business with the local stamp guy whatever that's <laughs> like unless you can have something where people are putting money into your bank account then nothing else matters and uh are at least like in in terms of like growing a good uh like a true business right no that's a great that's really great so we've got hope experience and clarity for year three and so for me the pain i solve is uh messaging and the, what I call the focus of what the marketing and sales messaging should be. Because if you don't have a clear narrative, everyone's going to have their own idea and then you're going to get, people are just going to get confused. So my whole point in what I do is I try to focus them on the tip of the spear, which I think a narrative is the single point of contact for everything. And then everything focuses out from there. So the pain I saw, if I were to pick a word, would be focus. Like, what are you going to focus on in your message that's going to get people to, you know, get into Kyle's funnel <laughs> yeah. so that they can make money? <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Well, yeah. So, so you see, so you've got these, you know, three to six sentences and you've got these three words, right? And then now what we want to do is put these all together to create a narrative that is going to essentially go, well, humanly viral. So when Kyle or myself talk to someone and they say, hey, what do you do? Or what are you about? And you say your narrative, the, the question that we want people to ask us is, oh, tell me more. Mm -hmm. that, that's all we want. We don't want to inundate people with the litany of things. I think in one of the solo podcasts you did, you had the like three or four different types of um, experts and I don't remember what, what one was the one that was like super technical or like super like knew what they were doing and it was just gibberish. And you said, you like, I just wait and wait to see how long they'll talk for. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all, okay, that's a little evil, but we don't want to be that I admitted person. it was kind of evil too. It was, but, show, but, but I think it, it, but it's a good point, right? Because mm -hmm. this is what we want with all this. So if you are at a cocktail party, you're trying to get money or customers, you want the other person to ask you questions. You want them to talk more to you than you talk to them, especially when you first meet. So this narrative is that hook. That's the, it's the invitation for someone to ask you more questions. Because the other thing about a really clear, concise, and compelling narrative that's delivered with confidence is that you may not want to talk to this person. It may be a waste of both of your time. And the sooner you know that, the better. So as you kind of create these, these narratives, again, it's you know, the combination of like the signature statement and the PR narrative, and you start to practice them, take a step back, see if people ask, oh, tell me more. See if people say, oh, that's really interesting. Because that's what you want them to say. This is the opening shot, I guess, or the opening gambit or the opening line, you know, like if you're a comedian, you know, you want your first joke to be like hit hard mm -hmm. <laughs> so that people will be engaged. Mm -hmm. And so this is the invitation and you want to give people the invitation, not only to respect their time, but to respect your time. So as you put all these things together, this 10 to 15 second narrative signature statement elevator pitch is really going to be the start of a conversation you hope, a good conversation, 
or you end it there and you go on to someone else because who wants to <laughs> sit around and listen to this like litany of things? You're like, can I get away? Can I get away? And, and I know maybe not all of us have done that, but some of us have guilty as charged. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's know, not so. a lot you can do when you're no. in a moment like that. No. So you might like, you just kind of, because uh, you can't be like, I'm sorry, you're too boring. Yeah. I need to leave. <laughs> maybe you can say, I, I need to go to the bathroom or something. Yeah. But like, oh, one second, right? But, but again, you know, we, we want to have these narratives and these signature statements really cohesive to the point where we offer, again, what we do in a simple, clear way. And that yeah. you hopefully, you get it, you impress some people enough where they tell someone else. And the simplest way to tell someone else is if they understand it and they can reproduce the words, right? So that's why it has to be clear, concise, compelling, and delivered with confidence. Because then can now you want other people to say it. Can you give me some examples of where this could be applied? And maybe, maybe I'm more in marketing and PR work than in PR world, yeah. but, but like some, some things with, can we use this on our landing page? Yes. Can we use this on our home website, on podcasts? Where do, where else does this become a really useful tool? Yeah. So for me, the way I think about it is everything kind of flows from this narrative or signature statement. It is, the single big idea that you have, it's the thing that you are going to back up. So literally the first thing on your website should be this. And it then after that, if someone's like, oh, I'm interested, they click through and now they can, you know, get more information. And so, you know, as examples, like in a tech startup, a lot of times, if you look at a technology company's webpage, it's filled with buzzword bingo. It's filled with all the things they do and the software and the thousand different ways you can use it. And you just look at it and you go, I don't, I'm, I'm inundated. I don't, uh, I don't know. Do I even need to pay attention to this? And so when you do this, you can clarify that landing page and you can hook people in and then you can give them the, the resources they need if they want to pursue it. Because again, the last thing you want people to do is to get frustrated with your website. So you're given a speech you're doing an intro to a podcast. I mean, what you do when you do your intro, you know, your signature statement is pretty good because I know that's what you're about. You know, you know, the story engines about, we help entrepreneurs, coaches, and influencers use storytelling to attract their ideal audience, inspire them to take massive Ooh. action. I know, Ooh. I know what you do. All right. <laughs> like, oh, I want to know that guy, right? Mm -hmm. If I need that, I'm going to be like, Oh, I'm going to talk to, to Kyle. And you, you, and so for me, this impacts everything. You get this right, the rest of it is a lot easier because you always go back to your signature statement. You always go back to your narrative. Am I on message? Am I on point? Do I need to refine it? Who am I talking to? How should I start? How should I open? Always open with this. How right? does it work with uh, team members? Is there ways that this, this message should resonate with our team members as well? Yeah, I think so. I, it, it's similar to a mission statement or a vision statement, but not as buzzwordy, bingo-y. Not mm. as um, easier to say and maybe not as, I mean, it's aspirational, but it's, again, it, it forms the foundation of a lot of this stuff. And so for a team member, you know, it's like anything. If you're going to recruit someone to your company, you kind of want them to be bought in. Mm -hmm. Well, how are you going to buy them in? You have to explain what you do. What's the easiest way to explain what you do? Tell them your narrative. Hey, you interested? And this is what we're about. Oh, well, hey, what, is, uh, what do you mean by influencer, coach? What do you mean by massive action? Then the conversation starts to go. And the nice thing is if it's, again, clear, concise, and compelling, they internalize it. And they start saying it to other people, especially mm -hmm. other customers or other, other colleagues. That's the way you build a culture that can be repeatable. That's the way you internalize your, your core. I love it. Yeah. You know, if, if it's not, if it's too complicated, everyone's going to be like, ah, oh, we make some SaaS product <clears> that does blah, blah. And you're like, ah, you know, your eyes roll in the back of your head, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. It's something I've been investing in a lot, but Based on something you've just said, I might leave it all behind uh, with a new business idea that's just emerged and you listeners can take it from me if you can beat me to the punch. But you keep saying buzzword bingo 
And uh, I, I don't think you actually have bingo cards, but I think that these cards <laughs> really could be made. And if you were a clever, especially I think tech company consultants, it would be like, hey, I put together this card of the tech, you know, the least popular bingo techie buzzwords. And I just read through your homepage and started plinking, plinking, plinking. <laughs> And, uh, and you're a total like blackout or whatever. Like this is the score I got. Let yeah. me know if you need any help. A hundred percent. I, I do have a buzzword bingo card. I put in a slide deck, but oh, okay. I do not have this cool idea where you can the then assessment. assessment, the buzzword bingo assessment card. Oh, yeah. Nice. I need the functional medicine, uh, uh, Equivalent. version for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that it, one would be wild. Every industry has those buzzwords that, you know, again, I mean, so you sometimes have to use them, right? I, I understand that. But if your copy on your website's littered with buzzwords, you're just like every other person. Like you, you, no one can get through it because even the smart people are overloaded. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, New York times bestseller books in nonfiction are written at the eighth grade, seventh to eighth grade level not because they're dumb, it's because the message has to get through. You, you get cognitively overloaded if you have to think a lot or mm -hmm. if the message is too complex. So yeah, uh, <laughs> we, should, we should work on that. That would be a great yeah, yeah. assessment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next business. Next, next business, business idea. idea. All That's right. Scalable for sure. Jari, we have explored a lot of just different storytelling and this, this uh, PR narrative is an excellent and very useful groundwork tool. Uh, it's been fun kind of going through it with you and hopefully everybody else that's listening has found some use in it. Um, again, if you developed your own narrative, let us know in the comments over at thestoryengine.co and uh, we, we would love to, to chat and give you some feedback. Uh, Jerry, any last thoughts and where can we go and uh, connect with you and learn more about you? Yeah, no, um, the, the only parting thought I would, I guess, give everyone is that, you know, our story evolves over time. You know, my story two, three years ago is different than it is today. And I think we have to be open to that evolution and open to the new possibilities of where our lives may lead. And so you, each one of us is get again has a unique gift. We need to express that through story, um, and that's just something that again, I I truly truly believe in and try every day to just live my best day every day. And if you want to hear more about what I do, you can follow me on my blog, the, the dailymba.com. Uh, if you want to look at what I do with PR and marketing, it's jsypr.com, which is the firm. And you know, I've written a couple of books. You can see on Amazon. One seven PR secrets all founders should know, which is where I where you can see this PR narrative, and then the other one's called the Entrepreneur Ethos, and it's about how to build better entrepreneurs and have that internal mindset. So all the stuff we've been talking about kind of blends <laughs> blended all together. But it's been a great great conversation. I'm glad we could catch up. I'm yeah. glad you're feeling better. I'm glad the business is going well. And again, you're just doing such a great job on this story thing and. I'm a fanboy, so. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. It's been so much fun having yeah. you on the podcast. Yeah. And thanks everybody out there for listening in. We've hoped you'd enjoyed this and we'll talk to you next time.